Hey YouTube, today is uh, Monday, 30th day of August 2021, about 9.48 or so in the morning. In this building right here, I am starting a Civil War tour. Alright, so the Civil War did affect the city of Cape Girardeau and surrounding areas of course as well. Jesus is called the Port Cape Gir Girardeau. This is a um, restaurant now, but they're saying that when uh, U.S. Grant was actually here in, in, in 1861, that he may, and that's the way it's worded, he may have used this as his headquarters while he was here. And then there was a hotel that he stayed in as well. And the hotel didn't exist any longer, but um, uh, the, 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 I'll show you the site of, of where they say that that's at. Now you can see this is actually right across from the murals that I had shot that I showed you in my other video. And of course on one of the other Civil War sites that they point out is simply this. It's just this, the Mississippi River obviously this helped to carry troops, you know, up and down obviously, back and forth. So this here was a very important part of the Civil War to carry troops both ways and supplies and everything else. All right, let's keep on with the tour. All right, from the best I can tell, and I might be a little off, but best I can tell, that building over there, that's what used to be the old hotel. So that uh, Grant actually stayed, apparently here, during the Civil War. I think mean, I shot that building there before in my downtown video as well. But, uh, so you can see, some of these are the same areas I shot. Anyway, they've got this courthouse right here. That's a huge construction zone, as you can see. This here is one of the memorials for uh, that's here, and the other ones are there. So I believe this is the Confederate here, and you see it's a very dirty pool of water. I don't see any kind of a sign on it. Got a big hole oh, right here. Finally, here we go. Yeah, the soldiers of the Civil War in memory of. So that's what that little plaque right there says. All right, let's go over here and look at the other one. All right, so this, I believe, is the one for the Union. And you can see, I mean, man, they got this so grown up. And let me see what this says. It says William Adam Chivalbine, 1890 to 1949. So, okay, not sure about that. And then this one. Says Dr. C. E. Sheward or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is not. There was supposed to have been a second memorial here, I thought, but maybe they just made that one, just both sides. I don't know, because you can see that's a bunch of bunch of uh, equipment down there and here. But this uh, this court of common pleas here was actually built. It said in, in 1854, I think was the year. They did not add the cupola, and the two side wings were not here either. So it's just the main building that you see right there. And uh, so that's all for this part of the Civil War tour. So let's go to stops number three. All right, so this white house right there, that is a Minton house. That that is, uh, it was used in the Civil War as a hospital. So that's the importance of it. Yeah, this is actually the Lorimer Cemetery, and Lorimer is the last name of the guy who actually founded this area. You can see a little bit of it, hopefully, from here. I can't get in at every every gate seemed to be locked and all of that, so, you know, that's the Lorimer Cemetery, so I just wanted to show that to you. Okay, now here is a college area, and you see this uh, waterfall right there. It's pretty cool, but anyway, somewhere... Right over in there, this is where Fort B was located. I just can't get find any parking literally anywhere. But in this location is where Fort B is. That was used during the Civil War. So they had A, B, C, and D here. A was around the courthouse that I couldn't get to. This was B. We'll try to get C, and then D is the only one that exists. All right, so this intersection right now that I'm going through, it's saying this is the approximate location of where Battery A was, that they had a couple of guns and they were shooting at, uh, you know, guns being cannons, that they were shooting at um, 
the Confederates, but then they were ordered to stop because the Confederates were too far away. Okay, so right up here at this intersection, they're saying that the 1st Nebraska was over in here fighting this particular battle, and the 32nd Iowa was somewhere in here. So it's in this approximate location where this battle took place, was right in here. Okay, so around here, you can see this is downhill. It's saying right here somewhere on this high ground behind me, and over here to that side, and over to that side, that this is where the first Nebraska also was. They had some guns and stuff in here. So probably there's only one big battle here in Cape Girardeau. So this is the areas where it was fought at. Obviously, you know, these neighbors had to get woken, woken up by it. All right, so this little monument right here, this is going to show you, i tell you about the battle of Cape Girardeau. It says this homestead, which is, there's nothing here, was the center of Bloomfield Road and left flank and Perryville Road, the right flank of the Union forces commanded by Eric by Brigadier General John H. McNeil, a sharp, bloody attack by Confederate led by General Joe Shelby from the command of General John S. Marmaduke was repulsed on April 26, 1863. This engagement came to be known as the Battle of Cape Girardeau. So there you go. So apparently there should be a house here. Now when you look at their brochure, they tell you to go down Carruthers Street, which is that street over there. This right here, this little street right next to it, this is the street that you need to be on. Uh, it's Cordelia is the name of this street. You see the McDonald's right over there. And so what I did was just park up in that parking lot up there and walk right back down here on this corner of Broadway. And that light is Carruthers. And you see right there is Cordelia. So that's where this monument's at. Don't let it confuse you. All right, let's keep going. All right, so where we're at here at this intersection, this is literally one block up from where I was at. This is Carruthers running this way, and this is Thylenius running this way. And here on this corner, they have this big signpost, as they call it, the Battle of Cape Girardeau. This is actually a central middle school, and it's right in that yard. Look how dirty this thing is. I mean, well, they should have taken care of it. But anyway, you can see here's the battlefield right here. So, as I said, I mean, the heat of the battle was right in this area. But here, if you want to pause this and read all of this, just pause it and read it, and then, you know, unpause it and come down, pause it, read that, same thing. Now here's you, a, a map with a legend right there, a Marmaduke's Cape Girardeau Raid, April 17th to May 2nd of 1863. So you can see their, their movements and everything, where, where they went. So they're all over the place. Okay, then there's that big map that I already showed you. And there's a little heading underneath of it. Again, pause and read. Pause and read. You can pause and read all this. If you like. And here is uh, Colonel Joseph O'Shelby. Uh, Brigadier General John S. Marmaduke, and so here you can see just a little drawing of what they might think it looked like, I guess. There's that, so you can continue reading all this stuff. And then a retreat into Arkansas. All right, so there you go. So it's the Battle of Cape Girardeau. Okay, now on this street, which is Sunset, we're actually in no man's land, they said. Over here to the left was the Union Army, it was all along down through here. The Confederates was to my right, which is that way that you're looking now. So all along here, this was literally no man's land. Nobody could come in here because you get yourself killed. Again, Confederates the way you're looking right now. Union would have been up in this direction. How they would have fought around all these houses would have been beyond me, but you know, it's what they did, I guess. Of course I could. So anyway, that's where we're at. I'm driving down no man's land. These people living here probably don't even know this. Hopefully, you can read this. This is where Fort C was. This was the location of it. So hopefully you can pause this, see all that, and read it. It's kind of hard for me to tell from this distance. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. You see, I had to extend out my selfie stick because I cut this fence here. And this is where they put this. This is on private property. There's obviously apartments here, it looks like. 
But this is was the location of Fort C during the Civil War. As you can see right here, I am at the historic Fort D. City of Cape Girardeau, that says. So down here is a bunch of plaques. So this is the location. You can see they got this all built up here. Representations of, of walls, I'm, I'm sure, is what this amounts to. Mississippi River is right over there. So obviously would have been a great place for a fort. Then we get soldiers in and out easy and fast. Supplies, all of that. So right here's a little monument. I'll tell you about Fort D. I will let you pause this and read it, okay? All right, now we got a bunch of signs here. So I'm not gonna do these in detail, but here you can see Grant takes command of Fort D. So I didn't even know that, but Grant ran this place at one time. Here, I'll tell you what, let me just go back and forth. Probably be easier. Unwanted, untrained, and, undis and indispensable. There you go, it's about women. Down the Colorado. So here you go, work on Fort D beginning on August. 6th of 1861. So, actually, while the Civil War had been going on for four months at this point. All right, this one. The 20th Illinois Regiment. You can see. Down here. All right, saving Fort D. So, after the Civil War, the Fort's and the of Cape Girardeau slowly disappeared. All right, so they wanted to save this and put this back, so they did. And here, marching with the 1st Nebraska. So you can see that, see these little pictures up close. See that there, St. Charles Hotel. You can see the flag there. So again, here's just a representation, I'm sure, of what the fort was. See this little sign right here it says Fort D, 1861. National Register of Historic Places is 2019. So they just made this a historic place. Kind of crazy, huh? As important as something like this would be to our history. Okay, 32 pounder seacoast gun. So obviously that would have been to try to get them uh, boats out of the Mississippi River down there. All right, and then quickly, let me grab this one. That's probably a representation of that gun, I'm, I'm going to guess. Quaker Cannon, sure enough, so see? Again, you can pause all this, of course, read it, and learn. But they just got this set up here, just a creosote log, just showing the cannon that would have been sitting there, aimed right out there at the Mississippi River, so when a boat came by that they didn't believe should be there, well, they could have a chance of knocking them out of the water. Bowling for boredom. Boredom and disease were the biggest enemies of the soldiers of Fort D. So here you go. So pause this and read this and learn. Looked like they, they did a lot of bowling here. Troglodytes. Okay, so there's a picture of what they built right there. All right, and then that sidewalk just runs down there and that's it. This is the side of this building they've got up here to represent the fort. And there's a, you can tell it used to be a door back here and a window. And then back here is the back of the building. And now they've got a iron gate there on the windows as well. Oh my goodness, look at this. Absolutely. I mean, somebody said fires here. Beer Gee whiz. Look at this. Turned over this bathroom. We're in not a good neighborhood, okay? And, and we're obviously where people do not respect property, history, 
people who, who gave their lives for the, the freedom of this country. I mean, it's just crazy. But see, out here, you see the bridge over there across the Mississippi. So that's good enough for you to see it there. And again, just the side, side of this here, and then this is back to the front. All right, so that's Fort D. And whoever did this back here should be found and just jailed. All right, now, you know I only bring you the best, right? I mean, I strive, I work really hard to bring you only the best. What's the best this time? Check it out. Huh? What do you think about that? The world's largest fountain drink cup. 4,730 gallons of lemonade. The record was set August 20th, 2017. Where is it at? Well, you don't have to ask that question no more now, do you? No, you don't. This, I'm going to take you to the other side where you can see it a little bit better, hopefully. Now you're starting to see it better. See, they even got a straw up there. See that red straw? And there you go. Roads. 605,555. I guess that's ounces. I'm assuming. So it holds, it holds a lot. Alright, now you might be thinking. Alright, it's some sort of optical illusion. This is a joke, right? Let's go over here and see if it's a joke. Okay, here I am. And here's this, all right? Now here, hopefully that's showing you the size of the cup here. You see my head right up against this? How do you like that? Is that good? This thing is hard, this thing is metal. Listen. That's a tank. So yeah, it's up there, it's about 15 feet tall, I believe, something like that. And it's big. And it's right here. It's at a Rhodes gas station. That's what that is over there. So, right next to the Zaxby's over there. So, if you're ever in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, come by the Rhodes right here in this little field, right by the street. You can't miss it once you get anywhere around here. And it's there. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Glad I could add some good treasure to your mind. All right. You take care of yourself.